Hello beginning painters, I've got a very simple scene that I shot with my camera in Annapolis, Maryland a couple of days ago and I thought it would make a perfect, very simple beginner painting. I'm going to paint in casein today, but you can paint in oils, gouache, acrylics, or whatever medium that you want to paint, it'll work for everything. Very simple uh, sailboat scene and uh, let's get going. I know this may be a little difficult for you to see, but on my uh, board here, I have a, a, a medium gray toned jet hardened gesso board. Uh, and on that surface, I have, uh, have sketched a little, um, a little sailboat here. Uh, and I didn't sketch anything else on there because it's going to be quite frankly very easy to get in. But this sailboat was very important to me because if you live in the Annapolis, Maryland area, everybody around here knows boats. And if you get them wrong, people are going to notice it. So I want to get it so that it's at least a little closer to uh, reality so that, um, you know, it doesn't distract people when they take a look at the painting. But we're just going to put in a simple uh, sky. Uh, there's um, in the real life, there's a big... Uh, row of just some, you know, deciduous trees that are hanging out back there. So we'll get some nice greens in there. And then of course we'll do the water and then um, also our boat here. Uh, we're gonna keep this as simple as possible. I do have a little tree to put into the extreme foreground. That'll come last and we'll just paint that right over the top of the scene. Uh, and other than that, it's pretty simple. Now, how did I get this sketch on here? You might be wondering. Well. I shot the photo from uh, real life. I was visiting one of our painting friends who works at the Annapolis uh, Sailing School. So this is a scene from the Annapolis Sailing School. Um, I shot the photo there. I came back, uh, I sketched it into my notebook, which I'll show you right here. Well, I just dumped down all my brushes, so that's pretty awesome, right? But I, um, I sketched the scene completely onto uh, this uh, paper right. I actually did it to scale at eight by 10. So I drew an eight by 10 rectangle and I sketched out my scene uh, right here. I then took some tracing paper, which I have here. I then traced the sailboat and the horizon line onto that uh, tracing paper. And then I put the tracing paper down on my, um, against my canvas and I traced it uh, on there. Of course, I marked on the back side of it so it would transfer a little bit of graphite onto my board right here. But that's how I did that, folks. Now, I'm going to give you a scan of my drawing so that you can um, so that you can do that as well. So if you want to do this painting at home, um, just uh, click the link in the video description. It'll take you to my website where you can download the, uh, the drawing for free just to kind of help you out. So you kind of know where we're going. I'll also put that drawing up on the screen from time to time as we go along. And uh, that'll kind of kind of show you where we're at. All right. So here we go. Now, before we begin, you can use any colors that you want to achieve the blues and the greens, and, and you can make your boat any color you want. But just so that you know what I was using, I used a cadmium uh, red extra deep, an ultramarine blue, uh, a Naples yellow, titanium white, and ivory black in this painting. That's all I used because I could mix any of the, in the greens that I needed to out of my uh, blue, yellow, and black, and I could tone it down with a little bit of the cadmium red since that's a complementary color. It'll tone down the thing. So more on that in, in more advanced videos. Since this is a beginner uh, video, this is all I used uh, to paint this painting. Now, as we get going, remember, this is about the most basic, simple painting that you could paint as a painter. So th there's really only one element that you have to worry about. The sky is uh, pretty interesting as it goes in here. Uh, you don't have to make your sky like mine. In fact, uh, to be honest with you, that sky was a very boring sky the day I shot it. It was so clear and sunny that there wasn't much action in the sky. So when I was painting this painting, instead of making one just very dead, boring color, I decided to alternate the colors every time that I put my brush up on the canvas you'll see uh, and I know that you can't see in detail but every time I go in there I'm remixing a little bit of blue taking that blue and putting it back up there so sometimes uh, you'll see already on the canvas I've got some dark blues up there some light blues up there I've got all kinds of stuff and you'll see further along as I go along this painting I'm actually going to let some of that uh, gray uh, gesso board uh, shine through in my sky and it kind of looks like a little bit of distant clouds in the sky but I just really wanted a little bit of action in the sky. So for you new painters out here who are doing this painting, don't feel like you have to make your sky some solid, dead, boring sky. Uh, they're much more interesting when they've got big, bold brush strokes in it and they've got alternating colors. So keep that in mind. And even then we could really, we could talk and in, in, we could go deep into Nerdville and talk about the actual colors that are in the sky that are beyond blue. But we will save that for a later time.
All right. Uh, uh, th- th- all I'm doing here is just picking up blues as we go along. I'm going to fast forward through some of this. You're not missing anything at all. I just don't want you to sit here and watch me fiddle with this blue sky for a while because I'm going to just guess off the top of my head. It probably took me 20 minutes to get the sky in because I'm using casein paints today instead of oils, which is my normal uh, you know, medium. So casein's dry so fast on me that I'm constantly... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of burning a little bit of time there trying to get the casein emulsion back into the paint to kind of loosen it back up. So uh, I will spare you a lot of that. Uh, but just keep in mind, the only things that I'm using here are ultramarine blue, deep and titanium white to get this sky in. So just make some different mixtures with that and you're going to be good to go. Let's keep this as simple as possible. This painting should be fun and should get you on the road to seeing some success in your paintings um, so that you want to paint again. You know, I mean, that's really what this is about, right? Is have some fun, uh, get in here, uh, do this really super simple painting, get your feet wet with this painting, and then just move on to something uh, bigger and better. We have a lot more advanced paintings on our YouTube channel, so please uh, like and subscribe. And then, you know, start checking out our videos. Um, I think this might be the simplest painting we've ever done. Uh, you know, I mean, the sailboat might be a little more complicated, but heck, I gave you a template so you can do this thing. Uh, get on it. Get your stuff out. Let's uh, Let's get painting together. Just so you know, I'm using like a number four or a number six flat uh, brush. It's a synthetic from Richeson. Uh, link to all of the supplies that I'm using are in the video description. Uh, and you can use these brushes no matter what medium you're using. These are uh, Richeson Gray Matters brushes, which are fantastic. And you can use them for acrylic oils, gouache, uh, you know, or casings like I'm using them for. It's not that big of a deal. As long as you wash them cleanly, then you're, you know, you're going to be good to go. Uh, to use these brushes. They're fantastic. Uh, but yeah, uh, as long as you have a, a long bristled brush that's going to hold a lot of paint, you're really good to go. You're going to see me switch to another brush here in just a moment because there's a little area in between the sails that there's some sky is showing through. So I need to get that in in just a minute and uh, and you'll see that happening. And I think I'm using uh, like a number one rigger for that, uh, which I'll also like along with everything else put in the video descriptions. Now, if you're an oil painter, we are primarily oil painters. Um, so I'll put the uh, the oil equivalent also in the video description for you so that you can get that. If you're an acrylic painter, uh, I would suggest checking out these casings. They're kind of they're kind of awesome. So uh, if you don't know what they are, check out my other videos, uh, Paint Like a Caveman. Uh, these are the, the paints that uh, the cavemen actually uh, used long, long ago. Milk protein with a little bit of pigment that they dug up out of the earth, and they, voila, they were suddenly artists on the cave walls. And I'll explain that in that video to you really quickly. It's only like a one or two minute video. Here we go. Uh, let's, uh, let's get going to this. I'm going to, I'm going to just interject as we go. You see here now I'm going to, I'm going to try to get in that little detail in between those sails. And again, it's about authenticity, um, you, you know, People here know that there's a gap in between those sails with those two sails tied to the mast. And if I don't put that in there um, and I just were to leave that uh, like a sail, if I really wanted to over, oversimplify it, I could do that. But I just figure people around here, they're going to they're gonna nail me for that. So I got to get out that little brush and get some of that in. But it's just a couple little dabs of paint. All right. So now we're going to turn to the trees. And so I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue deep and Naples yellow uh, just mixed together. Um, a little later on, we're going to... Uh, approach these trees two or three different times during the video and that's because I'm allowing my paint to dry in between each application. So I'm getting the, the base coat in here right now which is again is just a mixture of Naples yellow and ultramarine blue to, to produce a really nice green. I did throw in a little bit of a color called shiva green. Um, you know if you're an oil painter or an acrylic painter you know it might be an equivalent of sap green just to kind of change the flavor a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to get these, um, these basic shapes in here. Um, they're not going to be finished. Okay, so I don't want you to think that when we go through this pass on these trees, they're finished. I really allow this paint to dry uh, so that I can come in because this casing paint, it dries in 10 or 15 minutes. So I go, I move on to other areas of the painting and then I come back into this and I start hitting these trees two or three or four times with brighter yellows, deeper browns, uh, some cooler green, cooler colored greens um, that help them, you know, some of the branches and leaves recede in the background. Um, I would like to point out one thing though, and I'm sorry I'm talking your head off right now. There's just a lot to tell you about as, as new painters. If you're watching this video, you're probably a new painter and you probably think that you should paint all the leaves. Right. Uh, that's that's a common mistake. But notice how I'm just painting shapes. 
right? I'm not worried about leaves. They're so far away. I can't see the individual leaves anyway. And pay attention further along in the video when I come back and I start putting the highlights and the shadows in on these trees, you'll see that I'm painting in large color blocks. And those make very believable trees. So don't get hung up on the details. These things are just too far away to see any detail. Uh, so, uh, you know, and that applies to most other things in your paintings as well. And we talk about that a lot in our other videos, even in our advanced videos, we remind people uh, that if you get too many details into a painting, you're going to probably be sorry, you know, generally speaking, because the more stuff you put in it, the, you know, usually the, the worse your painting looks, um, unless you're a hyper realist, in which those case, those people are awesome. Um, I, I will never be one of those. Um, I'm firmly an impressionist, uh, and uh, and I like it. It's a lot more fun. I can't. I don't want to sweat the details. I want to get in a nice little painting and um, and have fun with it and move on to something else. All righty. Uh, I'm gonna also speed through a little bit of these. There's not much beyond what you're seeing right here, uh, and then we'll move on to the next element. So at this point, we're kind of moving into the water, and um, I don't want to make this water complicated. Remember, I said it was a pretty sunny day, very bright. So there's there's spots in the the water that are going to be light and dark, just like they are in the sky, because the water is reflecting uh, the light from the sky in there. So uh, again, I'm just using uh, the the you know my blue and my titanium white in order to make a mixture. Now I'm going to vary these colors as well, just like I did in the sky, because I want there to be action in the water. Anytime you look at the water, especially this is the Chesapeake Bay, by the way, we live on an island called Kent Island, and I was just across the bridge off of there into Annapolis at the Annapolis Sailing School, looking into the bay. And um, you know, that water is going to be moving all the time. So I know sometimes those of you who live around lakes or ponds, you know, a lot of times that water is still, but uh, the bay is always moving. So there's going to be lights and darks. There's shallower sections. There's deeper sections. So all of that affects the color of the water. Uh, a lot of times, even the water is brown, not uh, not blue because of the, the, the uh, sediment that gets churned up, uh, you know, storm time and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, so vary your blues uh, as you as you lay this into. Again, I'm still you're just using that flat brush, uh, you know, and popping this this blue in. We're gonna fast forward through this too because there's absolutely nothing uh, new. Uh, do pay attention to the fact that when I come down to the bottom of the canvas, because that's the water that's closest to me, uh, I do tend to change the value of that to make the value darker. So if you don't know what value is, value is the you know the degree of lightness or darkness on a scale from zero to to a hundred uh, on a you know as compared to black. So uh, dark. In other words, as you come further in the painting. Um, your colors will become darker in value. And as they move away toward the horizon, generally speaking, they become lighter. There's lots of exceptions to that, uh, but that is the kind of the general rule. And we'll talk about the, the, you know, the exceptions in, in future videos uh, and even in some of the existing videos we have on our channel. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, I know I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we have like at this point that I'm posting this video today in May of 2024, we have about 175 videos on our channel. So there's a lot for you to check out. Uh, and uh, so I hope you join us and there's going to be plenty more as we as we move along here. Now that we've got our sky and our water in, uh, you know, with our with our blues, and we've got the basics of our trees in the background. Now it's really time to turn our attention to this boat. Now this boat does take a little bit of time because it's so tiny. Uh, I drew it very small because that's the way it was in real life as I was taking a look at it. Um, I did make another sketch, you know, just so you know, you can blow that up. I did make another sketch um, of the boat in a much closer scene, uh, but it, I, I chose to paint this one because I didn't want to, I didn't want a whole lot of detail on the boat. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible for you. So we, uh, you know, I, you know, so I made the boat very small as I shot it. So this is this was my view of the uh, of the boat. Uh, so that means we, I'm, I'm using that little brush. I'm, I've got that little number one rigger back out, and I'm going to fill in the majority of the boat with this number one rigger. So it does take a little bit of time. Um, so you know, feel free to fast forward and go backward depending on what you need to see or see again. Um, 
because there's going to be a lot of just little detail work that's going to be happening on this boat. Um, and just, you know, take your time with it. A lot of times people will have a tendency to grab a big brush because they're like, oh, I just, you know, I just need to get this in. But I'm telling you, you're, you, you may regret it if you don't just take the time. This boat actually is the star of the show. So uh, it's the focal point of the painting, star of the show, if you will. So it, you know, it doesn't need to be super detailed. Like I said, I drew it so that it would just, you know, it would just be a hint of a sailboat. Um, but still don't rush through this. Take your time, grab your little brush and figure out how to get paint in a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, like I'm doing here. Uh, and then just, um, you know, just have fun with this. Um, don't let it stress you out if you make a stray mark. And one of the good things is, you know, you can paint over it. Um, you know, if you're, if you're an oil painter, yeah, you might have to wait a few days before you can get paint back over it. If you're an acrylic or gouache or, you know, or as in my case, a casein uh, painter here, I am I can literally paint over this in 10 minutes after it dries. Same thing with you acrylic uh, painters. Gouache, to be honest with you, I haven't painted with yet, so I don't know what to tell you about that. I'm, I'm assuming that dries pretty quickly too, just like watercolors do, but I admit ignorance on that uh, medium, but I'll get to it eventually. It's kind of, it seems kind of cool and it's becoming more and more popular. Okay. All right. So that boat uh, is going in. That's just that's just a mixture, to be honest with you, of uh, CAD, red, deep. Um, and I think I probably put a little um, of that green in it from the um, from the trees in the background that I still had hanging out. And the reason why I did that is because green is the complementary color to red, which means it sits opposite of red on the uh, color wheel. And if I added a little bit of green into that red, it would actually bring it toward a brownish color. So that's what I did, kind of a Christmas brown, right? You know, like Bob Ross, if you're a Bob Ross fan, he used to call his his uh, alizarin crimson and uh, sap green mixture uh, Christmas green. So anyway, so yeah, that's what I did. So that's why that red is a little bit darker. It's almost a brown, a uh, very nice warm color. And it kind of pops off the canvas. And so right now I'm getting that mast in and I'm just using the same color for the mast because there wasn't much of a color difference in it that was visible. Uh, you know, each boat is different. So you make the decision on what color that you want to use, but you want to go something a little, little, little darker on this. And then I'm going to also outline those sails just to make it pop off of the, um, the canvas. Now, admittedly, in the original uh, that I shot, the, uh, the sails were not rimmed with this color, but I really wanted to, um, to emphasize uh, the sails in comparison to the, to the background scene. So I wanted it to pop a little more. So I put a little of this, uh, this color up in there. All right, have fun with it. This color is just titanium white with just a smidge of that blue from the water in just to kind of knock the brightness of the titanium white down. You know, you don't really find a bunch of titanium white right hanging out in nature, right? Usually it's got a little bit of a of a, of a shade uh, to it or a color mixture into it that knocks it down from super bright white. If you just threw bright white onto this canvas in that area, your, your white is going to be so bright that everybody's eye is going to go immediately to that section of that boat and that's where they're going to hang out the whole time, right? So if you put a little teeny smidgen of blue into it, it's just going to knock down that uh, super brightness of that white. Um, and since you're already using the blue in the 
painting, it, it's, it's very believable that it would be reflecting blue from either the sky or the water in there. So that's why I chose that. But, you know, you could choose to, to mix a gray or, you know, anything else that you wanted to do to knock down that color. As long as it, it is realistic, uh, you can, you know, you can do whatever you like.
I have switched to a number four angle brush. Um, I like those brushes because I can get them to a nice sharp point. And, um, the, you know, the angle just kind of allows me to rotate that brush downward, uh, you know, get that handle out of my way so I can see a little bit better. But I'm applying a, um, a mostly white mixture, but I did gray it down uh, significantly with uh, ivory black. Um, and the reason I did that as I wanted to make kind of uh, more of a neutral gray. Oh, and it, it, it's really funny when it dries, it's almost this, the exact same shade as the uh, as the gesso board that you can see on the left-hand side uh, sale right now. That'll dry darker. So that's one thing about acrylics and caseins is that they will dry darker than when you apply them. Oil painters, like me, I'm normally an oil painter, and um, I love the fact that when I put a color on the canvas, that's the way that it stays. Um, it, but I'm getting used to these caseins shifting colors on me. But anyway, so this is a, this is a very light gray or mid-tone gray that I'm applying in here. It looks bright right now as I apply it, but it will darken down. I'm just going back with my paint and make some corrections. Hey, we all make mistakes.
hey, don't get wrapped around the axe about putting this little dude on the back of this boat, which is what's coming up next. I just want to like pre-warn you. I literally just put a kind of a blob in there that has a basic shape because that's all I could see from the distance that I shot that photo. Uh, and that's all I need. All, all we need is to see that there's somebody back there steering the, the boat. Uh, and so this dude is just sitting on the side of the boat. Um, and, uh, you know, he had like an elbow out and he was wearing a baseball cap, but you can't even see that kind of detail. So don't stress about it. Just don't make your guy giant. He comes barely above the, uh, you know, the, uh, I don't even know what the heck the thing is called. The, the boom, is that what that's called? I don't know, you boaters can tell me. But anyway, uh, he, he comes just barely uh, above the bottom of that. So uh, don't make him giant. Don't make him as tall as your sails or it won't look right. Just a little teeny tiny blob back there that just kind of gives an indication that there's a human back there. You don't need any details of that human at all. Just a little blob of paint back there and you will be okay. Now I've mixed a lot more yellow into my uh, blue and yellow mixture for our greens because I want to be able to place a highlight on there. So um, a lot more yellow here will indicate that the sun is shining on some of those. Those blues in that first pass that we went through and the and the darker greens, well, those will act as our shadows. So you'll see me apply this uh, as as uh, in chunks of shape, right? So don't think about those individual leaves like we talked about earlier. You know, just little chunks of shape are, are sufficient for you to to. to place those in and these trees are going to start look, looking better and you know to be honest with you if, if I had thought about it I would have put these on last because I decided after this that I really wanted to emphasize these trees quite a bit so I started throwing in some browns and all kinds of stuff which you'll see coming up in the next uh, next sections of the painting but you will see me uh, you know make make more and more and more modifications to these trees they were just so pretty I just uh, I didn't want to leave them without allowing them to shine a little bit too literally uh, shine but you know they they trees to me are always just so fascinating and wonderful and uh, this was a great opportunity to cram uh, some really nice um, you know more realistic colors into uh, those trees back there I had a nice boo-boo right there that I'm uh, you know wiping off real quick and I'll put blue back over that layer you'll see me make that correction there but I mixed this brown uh, just uh, you know using uh, you know again back to the, uh, the, the you know the red and green mixture and then I actually also uh, you know as you see me putting in a different shades of this brown I added in a little bit of ivory black uh, just to tone it down um, and I only add in black you know a lot of artists will tell you never to use black but I do use black and I use it because this this particular one's a transparent black um, I use it sometimes as like 
I, I don't use it as my first method when I want to darken something. I use that as the last resort. So um, we'll talk about that more in other mixing classes. But um, I did use, uh, you know, a little bit of black in here because I've already kind of gone the limit on using blue to darken my greens. And so I wanted to darken a little bit more. So I added a little bit of black.
just making some final adjustments both to my water and then in just a moment some of those trees listen i want to thank you and i hope that you had an excellent time uh with your painting if you don't mind hey shoot me some photos you my uh, email address is in the video description hey let me see what you're doing out there i think uh, i would love to to see your paintings and of course don't forget that we do offer private lessons uh, online lessons in-person lessons we come we travel the country we teach classes so make sure you get on our mailing list uh so that you'll know where we're coming and uh if you have any questions also feel free we love to get questions from our uh our video viewers so shoot us questions if you have something uh, painting heck you might get a whole free video out of it right because a lot of times you guys will give me questions and then we'll make a video so that everybody can benefit so keep those questions coming thanks so much everybody have a great day and happy painting <music>